Today on the Tim Manor Podcast Show, got our Aussie, the founder, owner, well, we can say founder, the owner of Johnny Goggles, boutique opticians, eyewear boutique in Liverpool. Mate, how long has it been since the last time I've seen you? 2019. I remember the first time I saw you, it was a case of, I had this idea in my head and I thought, you hear that idea yourself loads of times. And I think to myself, you know what, someone else is to hear this. So I'm thinking, I need a rebrand, I need to refocus, I need a bit more direction to what I want to do. And the first thing I will take away is when I told you, your eyes were like, like, go on, tell me more. And for me, that was like, you didn't have to say any more at that point. It just gave me that conviction in myself to think, do you know what, I'm going to do this. Like, someone that's completely oblivious to this industry. Mm. I've just told this idea to you and they were like, yeah, man, that, 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 sounds, that sounds awesome. Where did the idea come from? Where, where did you first have that? Do you know what? Because always... you, you're doing things differently than other people. Yeah, right? so do you know what it was? I was? I've been doing this for like, at, probably at that time, about 10 years. So moved around, worked at different places. Then I thought to myself, like, like, the, the job was paying well, but for me, I just didn't get that satisfaction in what I want to do. So I looked at how everyone else did it. So I thought, I looked at the big green giant uh, on the high street, and I looked at them and I thought, yeah, it's nice, but there's something missing, that customer service, that satisfaction, that follow through with the customer. And I looked at other high street chains, but I just felt there was always a gap in the sense of the service element or the product element. And then I seen the odd optician somewhere down south, somewhere in London. And I thought, this is a great concept. Like as in the concept of trying to have these independent kind of niche brands made from all sorts of places in the world and bringing it to that sort of end consumer that people would generally not heard of. Because the problem is... Just name some of the brands you've got on, you've got so on mate. So obviously some of the, the really nice stuff is like, uh, we've got brands like Jack Marie Marge, which is a... A Los Angeles brand, but everything they, they is, don't just stock anywhere, do they? These? No. The, so the thing like, is, really you have so to that. you have to have a certain type of store to start with, and then when you look at this brand uh, and the owner, they, everything they do is limited production. So they'll have like maybe up to about five hundred pieces in this one frame, and once they make that frame, they don't make any more. It so it's like a the concept is very clever. It's like when you buy a Rolex, it's a hand me down to your kids. So these brands, when if you miss it, you miss out because you just don't get it. So imagine there's 500 pieces in the world. In the UK, there might be 12 accounts. There's not enough to go around because they might only allocate six pieces to the UK. So if you're within that six, you'll get that framing. And believe me, they just go because people collect this kind of stuff now. It's gone to a point where glasses have become more like jewellery. It's more like an accessory. Even if you don't need it, you want it. And this is where the brands are going. So these super high-end brands, like Jack Marie Marge, have just gone down this limited production route. Finest in materials, um, just super cool. Um, and if you know, you know. And that's the beauty. It's not got anywhere plastered on the frame that it's this brand or that brand. Yeah. I only know it because of you, like. Yeah, but once you see, once it, you yeah, see it yeah, once, yeah, yeah. you know every frame like that. It has a certain element to it. You think, I know what that brand is. And then we've taken another brand. So we've got uh, a, a, another brand made in Japan as well called Dita. Yeah. So Dita's a little bit more sporty, a little bit more sort of geared towards that younger kind of generation. And then recently we've taken on Chrome Hearts. So Chrome Hearts is, they don't only do glasses, but they do jewellery and leather goods. Now it's that kind of rock punk culture. Super high end, super luxury and super in demand. And same kind of concept that they just can't make them quick enough. But the, the price point on them a little bit high. So we just wanted to go into a market which was geared towards that consumer that wanted something different. Don't get me wrong, we still do the sort of the fashion brand. We have the like Ray-Ban, we have Prada. But where our niche is and where we get sort of a lot of traction is on these niche brands where I reckon within... Within the Northwest, we're probably one of few, one, it might be the only one that has that brand in stock. So if you want that brand, you can only come to us. But it's a significant investment, like anything. 
So you've got to really be behind that brand. You've got to love everything that you do by it because you've got to put your money where your mouth is. And it's always a risk. And that's where people don't want to take that risk. The risk is that you commit to this brand. Will it work? Won't it work? But you've got to have that conviction that, you know what? No one else is going to do it. And believe me, once you have it once, you want it again. And you become an ambassador for that brand. So it's not a case of like, oh, they're going to go somewhere else because no one else, they got it. And secondly, the service. It's like when you buy a car and you buy a car that's a, of a certain value. Buying the products is one thing, but servicing the products is another thing. So if you've got a problem with it, you're not happy with it. And the beauty about these brands are that when, you, when you're dealing with these brands, you're dealing with a brand that does just glasses. So if there's a problem, guess what? They sort it. So what my customer's like, you know what? I had a problem with the frame. 12 months in, this came loose. You just give me a new one. This is what we do differently. When you go to Specsavers or the other high street chain, they'll like, they'll try and say, sorry, we can't do anything. You're over warranty. We don't work like that. Our, we work a completely different concept. So yes, you get the product from us. Yes, it's pricier than what you get on the, on the high street, but you're paying for that kind of product, the premium products. And they'll last a lifetime. It's that kind of frame where nothing really happens to it. And if it does, We'll sort it. It's one of them. It's just, it's phenomenal. It's just amazing to work with. And the kind of people you get to deal with, it's phenomenal. Like, it's like when you, if you, if you like cars, you can buy a car for 500 quid. And you can buy a car for 500,000 pound. It's what you put value to. And my thing is that people that wear glasses every single day, it's an investment for the next two years. And if it's on your face, it's you, it's your character, it's who you are as a person that thinks, you know what? I'm going to rock these today. I know where it's like when you get in your car, you, you know, you, you work all week and you get in your car and think, you know what, this is what I'm working for. Like you put these glasses on, you think, this is, I feel good about it. And it's about the feel good. So yes, it's expensive, but how, how do you quantify value? What, you know, what you value, I value differently. And this is where the niche market comes in, where people actually value these kind of products that never thought were available. And once they've had it, once they were like, I want another one. I want another one. So this is the beauty about this is the beauty about the market that we're in. It's sort of super high end, but the service element that goes with it from the supplier and from us when you buy it, it's second to none. I, I, I test you. I test anybody to buy products off me and come back to me with a problem and me not to sort it because that keeps me awake. Generally, that's like, what I loved about you. Mate, do you know what I mean? Like when someone comes in and says to me that I've got a problem. I could have had a, a day where I've sold loads of glasses, but that one problem will bug me all night. And I'll, I'll figure, I'll find a fix. I'll wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to sort this out. And I ring them and say, look, I'm sorry, this happened. I'm going to sort it. And it's done. And that's what, for me, I don't look at, you know, like as a business, you think about, you know, we've got to hit this target and that target. I'll be genuinely honest with you. I don't set targets. I don't set targets on the day about what we should be doing. My thing is that everyone that comes through that door, service them properly, look after them, give them anything that they want and just service with a smile. It doesn't cost anything. And what happens miraculously when you do, when you provide good service, it spreads. People tell other people, tell other people and the cost becomes a very minimal point of that when you think, you know what, these guys are looking after me and whenever there was a problem, they looked after me. And you know, you, that's the beauty about what I do. That's what I like what I do. In the fact that people say, oh, do you, you know, you go to Liverpool every day from Bolton. But I love what I do. I love the people that I see. And it's, it's a day in day thing. You know, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. That, um, the, the, the stories that you told me where you go out to people with a, with a tray of glasses. Yeah. Just, just give people that, that, because I don't think people yeah. have ever had that experience yeah, so the, before. It's, it's, re it's, it's really good. So, you know, most people that usually do that is people who are generally quite busy or, they go on a holiday in the next couple of days and they just can't physically get out to you. So what we basically do is we'll ring them and say like, you know, just have an idea of what they want. And they'll say, look, I want sunglasses. I want some glasses for this. And we sort of gauge a profile of what kind of frames that they want. And what we will do then is we'll, we'll get product at various price points. So we'll get the super high end stuff. We'll get the stuff that sort of super high end stuff, mate. I mean, just to give people a gauge, right? Like what we're talking for, like the. the so look, if you if you went for sort of solid gold, twenty four karat gold pieces, yeah. so up to ten grand. Yeah. If you wanted diamond encrusted stuff, it all depends on the value of the diamond encrusting. So if you said to me, look, 
I want this frame completely blinged out, um, 24 karat gold, as many diamonds as you can put on it. It's just a case of how much that frame will hold. So sometimes with a diamond and crystal stuff, we ask for them to give us a value of what they want to spend on the frame. <laughs> because then we'll tell the jeweler, we'll tell the jeweler, look, this is the kind of diamond he wants. Yeah. This is the value we're working with. Make it happen. So obviously with diamonds, it's a case of like how clear it is and the, what, what grade it is and how clear it is and the clarity. So what, what the jeweler then does is he, he basically gets a set of diamonds together and he puts it on the frame. And sometimes he's got to redo the metal work just because the metal work from the frame supplies is not thick enough to hold that diamond because they've got to create a little pit. And once you create the pit, so 20 grand potentially. But if you said to me, what can you buy from the supplier off the shelf, it's, re it's relatively expensive, but 10 grand. Uh, and you're looking at sort of Cartier, uh, which is already a jewelry brand, so they do jewels really well. You're looking at Chrome Hearts, which also do jewels. So that's, we're kind of looking at kind of, but that's like a niche kind of, that's like super niche, that's a niche within the niche. Yeah. That's not your everyday kind of guy, but the problem is, when you've got your watch and your cars and you, you like your glasses, yeah. it's a piece that you wear when you're going out. It's, it's one of them where you'll just invest in that kind of product and you'll get the value back in the, either the gold or the diamonds. So although you're paying 10 grand, the resale value could be nine yeah. by the time you add the weight of the, the diamonds and the gold. But it is, it is super, super nice. And that's, it takes time. So what happens is that's a relationship thing. That So he, they've got to trust you and you've got to deliver that product. So that pro, when you go to sort of an optician, they say, yep, you've got a 20 minute appointment, you're in and out. Yeah. Go on, them, them concept. We, we, we sometimes take two hours with our customers just to say, what do you want? How do you want it? We can do this, we can do that. What lens color do you want? We can fade it this way, we can fade it that way. And he goes, oh, well, this is my favorite color. We'll send that to the lab and they'll say, okay, we'll customize it to that color. So we can do anything you want. If you can think of it, I can do it. it it's that simple. But like with anything, you bespoke it, it just costs more money just because the people that we use charge more money to do it. But it, it, it's a crazy, crazy concept. But then you look at that Jacques Marie Marge, I mean, you're looking at them frames and it range from about seven average to about a grand. So in the scheme of things, yes, it's expensive, but it's not really that expensive. If you consider something that you're going to wear every single day um, for a minimum of two years, and with your lenses, you're looking about average of, say, a £1,000 for a round number. If you work out a £1,000 over a two year, three year span, it's really not, not that much money. I mean, you, you buy a phone for 16, 700 quid, you know, and you, you know, at the end of like a year, two years, you sell it. And the phone's in your pocket or whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. This is like on your face. This is this is this is you. So you've got to understand that when you're putting these things on, it's a representation of who you are and your character. Because that's the first thing people see when you come in. You're like, your glasses are cool, and that's a conversation starter straight away. So these guys that are in meetings all day or going out, people are like, oh, I love your glasses, and that's where we come in. And I I'll give you a complete honest thing where. If someone comes in and they've looked at a pair of glasses and it doesn't look good, even if that frame's a grand, I will tell them it doesn't look good because they're representing me when they go outside. I don't want someone to say to them, they look too big on your face or that colour's not right on your skin tone. I put them on, I'm like, listen, I'm, you're representing me, so I'll only sell you what I think is 100% right. And that's where the trust comes in from yeah. customers. They tell their family and that's where the business is catapulted from yeah. from where we started in terms of redefining who we are and what we do having that image of where our brand needs to sit and where it's gonna sit that gave me the roadmap of like okay this is where I, this is the lane I need to stay in I reckon if I hadn't had that sort of focus or sort of brand direction yeah. I don't think I would have I would have been clear about what I wanted to do yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would have dipped in and out but I think the, the brand part of it is fundamental. So my, my thing to anybody is that if you've got an idea, it's all good having an idea, but you need, you need a bit of a roadmap. You need to know who you are. You need to know what you're representing. You need to know what you're doing. You need to have a, a, few, you need to have a bit of experience in the industry you're dealing in. And guess what? You're going to make mistakes. It's very, very simple. And guess what? The more mistakes you make, the more successful you'll end up getting because you need these mistakes to make you grow and you think, okay, I did, I did that wrong, I'm gonna do it again, but I'll do it different this time. And this is with business, with anything you know, you, you dealt with a lot of people that you see day to day. There's no, there's no blueprint to, to do well. 
It's a case of have your conviction and belief in what you're trying to do. Provide the best service you can provide. And guess what? The finance side will follow automatically without really need to think about like, this is what this business needs to do. It doesn't matter. Just do the, the fundamental small bits first. Then the rest will come. It, it's just very simple concept, but unbelievably true. I've seen so it happen. Just turn me back to that, mate, where you go out to people and um, you go out with the trays and stuff like that. So basically what we do, once they select what frames they want, yeah. we'll, go, we'll go out to them. And I have sort of an idea by that time on the phone call conversation that we've had that, okay, they want certain side, they, want certain, they like certain brands. Once I know what brands they like, I have an idea of what kind of feel they have. So I go out there and they'll say, and we'll basically go in the kitchen. We'll go in the kitchen on the, on the breakfast bar. I'm like, okay, this is what I've got for you. And I'll limit it to about 15, 20 pieces because obviously I've got like 500 frames and stuff. It's not possible to bring them all out. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I sort of hit convict. I, I know more or less straight away. But when, I put, when they put the first frame on, like, I can't know exactly what they want. And it's very, very simple. So what we'll do, we'll put the frames on and then they'll be like, oh, I really love this. Or I really love that. I go, no, try this on. It's slightly different, slightly bigger, slightly smaller. And guess what happens? They say, okay, I'll take both. Because the, the fact is that it's like a pair of shoes. You never get one that does everything that you want. Yeah. And we fit them on. And the difference is that when you go online or you go to like Selfridges to buy a pair of glasses, there's so many elements that you want to adjust on the frame. So how it sits on your nose, how it sits behind your ears. And these kind of supermarkets or shopping malls that you buy these glasses from, unfortunately, they don't fit them properly. And there's nothing worse than a fit, badly fitting pair of spectacles. Yeah, Slide yeah. down your face. Yeah. And... It's just crazy, and that's what happens. What happens from then is, by the time I've gone to look at like husband or wife, then the wife's like, oh, "I want some," and this is where the business is catapulted, where people will say, "Come in and see me," uh, and sometimes what happens is they'll I'll go there and be like, "Okay, can, I want something like slightly bigger, or I want sunglasses, or my daughter wants some. Can you bring a, a range of stuff?" So we'll bring a bit of a case, and it's it's really really good because you know what happens sometimes when you look at your glasses in your own mirror. Uh, in your own, it looks different when you're looking in the shop because obviously the light is a little bit different. Yeah. So they come in the house and like, oh, I love these. And I never get come back with house jobs. So in the sense of when someone's bought glasses from home, they never say I don't like them. There's sometimes some will go home and they'll have the glasses and say, I've taken them home. I'm not quite sure. And I say, to them, don't worry. Interesting. Come in and see me. I'll sort it out. And they come in and say, can, we, can I swap it to this? No problem. There's never, there's never any guilt in the sense of, because you, you've spent so much on your glasses. I want you to wear them. If you don't wear them, that's a disservice to me. The fact that yeah. we've gone through all this process, spent all this time trying to find the perfect pair, and you just had a change of mind because you, what you thought might look good is not what you thought you wanted. You want to go back to sort of a little bit of a safer option. Yeah. But home visits is like, it's, it's awesome in terms of, it's like, you know, busy people like yourselves, some people don't have, physically don't have the time. And we go out there and we'll take that hassle out of it and we'll, give, we'll show them stuff that they've never seen. It's a proper boutique service, mate. It, it's it? phenomenal, yeah. yeah. That's the difference. That's where we stand out compared to a lot of the other high street guys. They won't come out to you. And if they do, the product ain't going to be anywhere close to what we can offer. Yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It really, really is. When, did, when was that? What was it? 2019? Yeah. Um, do you want to tell people where the word Johnny Goggle, where the name Johnny Goggles come from? So basically, the story was that about thirty years ago, there was a there was a guy called basically Johnny Jonathan, and he owned a practice. It was just a it was a guy in the town, you know, knew everybody, everyone knew him, and everyone used to know him as Johnny with the goggles. And the coolest thing is that he just thought, oh, that catches. The Liverpool's a very catchy kind of kind of place. So that brand stuck then. It was like, oh, Johnny Goggles. So for me, like I was when I when I came to you, I don't even remember the conversation. I was like, I don't know how that name sits, like to a person that's never heard it. Like, cause I, I I've I've heard of the brand because I've been working there for ten years. I think like, is it cool? Like, is it is it a brand that people will sort of like or people think, you know, what that that should look cheap. That's tacky. That. And when I said to you first, you said you're gonna keep it, mate. And that's when it's like, give me that conviction that, you know what, I don't really need to change massive things about this. Yeah. I need to realign it back up. I need to readdress the focus of what it's trying to do. Recolor it, rebrand it, re-image it. And that's all we did. We changed it, you, you colouring on it. It was, just, it was just perfect for everything I needed. And from that, I was like, yes, now I've got that. I've got the book now. I just need to like run on that road. 
And like you said before, it's like because you've got that roadmap, it's all right making mistakes on the roadmap because I feel like you fall in the right direction 100%. or you mistake, mis- make mistakes in the right direction. 100%. And I feel people don't understand that. I think it's fundamental. I think you, you have to make mistakes. You will make mistakes. And yeah. there's no shame in making mistakes because mistakes are all part of the process. And yeah. what happens sometimes is you make a mistake and some people get really disheartened about it. Yeah. And then they lose focus about what their initial, that feeling that they had when they wanted to start the business and how they wanted to make a difference. So I say to anybody that if you made a mistake and you're feeling like, oh, this is going to be... Just fine, just get back on just get back on the bike. Just carry on. It might take you a little bit longer to get there, but just get back on the bike. But trust me, you won't make that mistake again. And you'll find something where you look at it, you'll do it, and you think, oh, thank God I did it. And you'll sit back one day and you think to yourself, you know what? Like, I don't know how I got from here to here, but damn, it's been a great journey. It's all it's a journey. I think people need to understand that it, it is a journey, it's a process. And you'll find stuff about yourself that you didn't know. You'll, you'll sort of dig into yourself more than you ever did when, you th- when things are going right or not going right. I think with business, I think you'll realise is you've got to stay very neutral. And you can't let the, 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 sort of the, the bad days sort of keep you down. And you don't let the good days go you on a high. As long as you maintain that neutral ground, you're sorry because then your mind's, mind's on track. Because when you're affected emotionally... Mentally, you're affected. I remember I went to a seminar and the guy said to me, really amazing, right? He said to me, think about a happy time. I'm thinking, all right, okay. Close my eyes. He goes, put your hands out. And he tries to push my hands down. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I'm like locked in. He said to me, think about a, a really difficult time you've been through, like emotionally. Put your hand out. A finger on each hand. Put my hands down. What does that tell you? That emotion affects mental power and physical strength. So you need to be in a good place emotionally and mentally in order to make the right decisions. And that's where if you made a mistake or whatever you've done, put it to the side. Yeah. Just just crack on with the next bit because no two days are going to be the same. I think that's fundamental. I think a lot of people lose track of that. Don't get me wrong, it's not been plain sailing. There's been days where I thought, oh, you know, it's right. But I just, just conviction is the fact that I, I believe in what I do. And the people that I see, and I see the outcome saying, oh, that was the best service I've had. Or you look at the reviews and like, I won't go anywhere else. And it, I'm not bought a glass if I'm an optician, I bought a glass if I'm a mate. I mean, that's what, that's what we're about. And that's where we're different. Yeah. And you'll only see the same people. Yeah. And that's where you go to most of the big, you never get continuative care. You go to your doctor, you don't get the same people. You will see me and my staff all the time. And you've got a problem, guess what? I'll sort it. You're not going to get some, I'm not going to push it to someone around the corner. I'll sort it because that's what I want to do. And I'll do that until I have the business. That's where the fundamentally, like we're, where we're, we're at, like we're like pure for service, 100% of product. And when you put those two together, you've just got the right recipe to try and make it work. It's just phenomenal. It really is. What's your, what's your perception been of what a brand is over the time that we've sort of like worked together. So from when you first come into the jo- Johnny Goggles brand that it is now, how how's that sort of like? So when I came in initially, it was a case of, I imagined what it would be. Like as it, there was no, I had nothing to back it up with. I had no figures, no data, nothing to say like, okay, this is going to work. Purely a dream, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's where I put that vision statement at the bottom. I wrote, a vision without action is just a dream. Yeah. We need to put it into action to make it reality. Yeah. And the difference now is that I can tell you now exactly what works. Because I've done it, I've been on that road. So if someone said to me that I want to open something like this, I could guide them in a way that will never get guidance before. Why? Because I've done the pitfalls, I know what works, I know what doesn't work. So for me, I'm so confident in what we've created as a brand that I can sit down in here and say to me, I'm the best optician around. You will not get anyone like me. And I tell that with conviction, not because I'm just saying it because lip service. I genuinely believe it. I genuinely believe that if you get service from me once, you will never need to go anywhere else. And very, very few businesses can say that with that kind of conviction to say, you know what? Like, you know, what does he do differently? And you'll know it's a family. When you buy off me, when you get glasses off me, it's not the case of getting the glasses. You, you become part of my family. I'll look after you for as long as you have your glasses. 
I'll look after you. I'll take care of you and your family. And that's where we're different. And that's where we like. That's what it, the brand's all about. It's not a numbers yeah, game yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a numbers game. It's a yeah. service game. Yeah. And that's where my brand focus is purely on that yeah, yeah. boutique, high end service. You know, when you go to a boutique, what do you get? You, you feel great about yourself because you, you you know you, you you're getting look at the best products. You're getting stuff that's really high. The service is different. We're no different. We do exactly, but we do it in a sector that people don't associate boutique kind of service buying glasses people think it's just glasses not until you've seen what we do you know we've got we, we do some unbelievable stuff. we've just taken on a brand called Maybach so Maybach do cars so all German engineered and the, they've got this certain way they laminate their wood and the colouring you can get on the wood mate you've never seen anything like it and it's literally they're doing rim, rimless glasses and it's got these colours of like white marble and greens and blues and stuff it's just crazy and they make them in like wood and buffalo horn but the the peat buffalo, buffalo horn. horn so basically the, the horn so there's it's all ethically done so you know when the horn naturally shed so they collect that shedded horn and they use that to laminate materials on the wood and it's like with horn as it ages it, it beautifies the material so you could have that frame for 20, 30 years. It looks nice in 30 years, they do when it does that, because it just ages naturally. So some of the stuff is like, people think, horn on frame. You see it once, you'll know what I mean. It's just, it's just different. It just really is different. Um, amazing. Obviously, I mean, this is why um, brands like Dieter are, are, are kind of going, yeah, we want to stock in Johnny Goggles because of your brand. Not of what it looks like, yeah, mate, yeah. But, but what it feels like. Yeah. And coming to you and going, yeah, Ozzy, we, we need to stock in yeah, Aussie I mean, shop. Look, when we took on Chrome Hearts, it's a brand that I looked at a few years ago. But when you take it, what's on, that? What is that? How do you do that? How do you stop someone like Chrome? So Hearts? you've got to, you, they've either got to contact you, yeah, or you got to contact them. But when they contact, if if you're contacting them, they're like, okay, we need to come down. They need to look at the shop. They need to look at the brand. They need to look at how it looks, how it feels, what you've got. And if they feel that it was discredit or devalue their brand, you've got absolutely Amazing. no chance. They just Sick don't give it. Idea. They I just don't give that. the brand. Yeah. So lucky with Chrome Hearts is I looked at that a few years ago and I thought, I'm not quite ready for it. Like I was yeah. taking a lot of new stuff. I thought, I'll just wait because it's like the, the, the traction wasn't quite there. Yeah. And believe it or not, come this uh, about summertime, Chrome Hearts, the guy who runs Chrome Hearts for whole of Europe and Africa ring me and he goes, do you want Chrome Hearts? We're not opening any account. I want, I want to give you one. I said, why me? And he goes, you're doing, you, he goes, I came into your shop the other day. I didn't know. Because your sh shop is sick. Like this is everything Mate we is want. Sick, isn't it? Yeah. Everything we want to do is like there. So I said, I said, look, I'm looking at it. He goes, I'm not opening any more doors for the next five years. Like I'm telling you right now, you, you pass this off now. You come to me in a year, two years. You're not getting the brand because I'm just not getting it. So I said, right, I'll get back to you tomorrow. So I go to sleep, I think about it. I look at the brand, I think, ah, this is a monster brand, this. I ring him and I said, yeah, I need some. And he goes, I said, how do you order? And he laughs at me and he goes, six months lead time on product. Whoa! So I said, I said what do you mean? He goes, everything... That was ordered six months ago was sold in manufacturing and sold so anything that you order now God, yeah, so expect good. a six month lead time so that, that's fine that works like we're in summer i've sort of missed that summer boat now we're going to get it sort of end of the year spring summer i said that's fine so goes, how do i sell it pieces he goes come to paris so they have a big exhibition in paris every year uh it's called silmo so we do all that buying there and he goes come and see the collection I saw the collection and I thought, oh man, this is like mega stuff. Is it like expensive, right? It's more expensive than Jack Marie Marshall. So you're looking at anywhere from about 1,200 quid to about three grand. But it's all either silver plated, 24 karat gold. But the way it sits and feels, it's like, you know it's a Chrome Hearts. Chrome Hearts is very, um, sort of like crosses and that kind of like gothic kind of theme. I feel like I need one of these pieces. But it's, it, the etch work on it is you look at the, you look at a piece, yeah. you look at the detail and you think, oh my God. Like even on the screw heads, they managed to engrave their logo, the Chrome Hearts logo on the screw head. 
And I'm talking the screw head's about three mil. So the detail and all of it's made in Japan. So whenever anyone says where your glass is made, all the fine stuff, that the really nice stuff is all made in Japan. Because the artisan eyewear special, all handmade. There's no machine stuff on this. And literally every piece, there's always, you get a slight variation on each piece, which makes it, it beautifies the piece. But you look at it and think, oh man, this is mega. But the brands got massive. So if you look at like all these footballers now, they want this Chrome Arts. Chrome Arts is like massive yeah. at the moment. And even like buying a pair of jeans, two and a half grand for a pair of jeans. You know, that's the kind of brand it's got. It's just phenomenal brand. But we do, it's that kind of market where normally you would have had to go to like a Selfridges. But the problem when you go to Selfridges, when you buy a product like that is they put them on, but the staff aren't trained. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, just yeah. sales staff and they can't put, they don't know how to adjust it. They don't know how it fits and feels. So we, that's where we're different. Like you come to us and we'll give you the whole, the whole service, adjust them for you, any issues, any um uh, maintenance on the frames that need you know sometimes things get loose we we'll tighten them all up we we'll send it for a service we we'll do all of that so that's where that's where we're, we're in our niche that's where we're our element compared to what other other opticians are doing so you're still going down to everton and we do that yeah so every year um uh, before uh season starts they all have to have a medical um the eye test is part of it so we'll go there and then throughout the year what will happen is are they all like that aussie yeah, yeah, us, yeah, us, yeah. So I'll come down and be like, "Oh, how are you doing, house kids?" You know, it's it's basically like I, I've seen some of them so many years. Yeah, yeah. Um, that like, yeah, you can just re- use the room there, you know. Um, and then when they want glasses, like throughout the year, they're going away on holiday. They'll ring me and say, "Oz, I need some glasses." Uh, and he goes, uh, "Shall I come to you?" And he goes, "No, I'm gonna finish trading and I'll come outside the shop." So what we have is um, where we have a private parking area where we are so customers are coming in and they don't want to yeah. park in the car park yeah, yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll just let them slide into the ground parking yeah. uh private they got all their um you know all their safety and security on that side come yeah. in do what they want and then back in the car so yeah ever is a is a contract we've had for a long time um and we'll continue doing that and we get even players from liverpool as well coming in like um we had some summer gone and it's that kind of thing where people have you know players talk like oh where'd you get your glasses from or oh, what Johnny Goggles I'm going to pop down when I go into town next so we kind of building this kind of brand profile where oh, yeah, Johnny man. Goggles is like the place to be if you want the yeah, coolest yeah, glasses yeah. I mean 2019 that's what you talked about 2019 2019 man. that's the dream 2019 the craziest thing was remember Covid hit 2020 yeah, yeah. I know some people say oh Covid for me it was a blessed because guess what I did? I got to the shop out. I just completely turned it on its head. And I said, you know what? It's fine, quiet. No problem. I want to do I'm gonna do all my building work. So literally within, I shut it down one sort of, I think it was a Sunday. And within 11 days, I had it back up and running again. And basically, and then, then it was like, okay, now we're starting. And then obviously as, the thing with COVID was that we helped so many people out. You know, some people had like, their opticians closed. Mm. So like, oh, my glasses broke. We did it for nothing. Like, we just, it was our bit, you know, bit of giving back. But guess what? A couple of years later, when they needed a pair of glasses, guess where they came? They came back to us. Why? Because when they needed, when they needed help, we were there. And it's the same kind of thing that we see these kind of people coming through. And we get other opticians ringing us saying, we've got a customer that wants something a bit different. Can you see them? So they're sending their customers to us because they, even they know now that actually, these guys have got some, got some amazing stuff. And the thing is now, that our brands are so locked in Liverpool or around the Mary side, even the Northwest, that even if you wanted to open that brand, they'll say to you, no. Because they're saying that like, we don't need another account in Mary side because this guy's just smashing it. Like, we don't need it because once you start affecting the service of that brand, it affects the brand. And they've got to make sure that the, whoever they give their account to, they'll service that brand in a way that they want it to be serviced. They don't want any bad reputation on the brand. And we, thankfully, the way we do business, we do it the right it's way. It's everything you talked about in 2019, yeah. you've actually made happen. Made mate. it happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, what, it's like five years. Yeah, ago, we made it happen. Five and I think years it, ago. Yeah, it's just, but you've got to have that, you've got, you've got to have that sort of passion as well for it. You've got to, you got to like the market that you're in. Um, it's not for everybody because it's quite intensive from an emotional point of view. You've got to care, you've got to give a shit. Like, if you didn't give a shit, you could let things pass. Yeah. Like, you know, if, if you've got a customer that's not happy, you let that pass, yeah, but I can't let, yeah, I can't yeah, let yeah, that pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's fundamental that. Like, yeah, I've got to we were saying happy. about that. I mean, Charlotte said to me the other day about, like, um, it's not personal. Um, 
And I'm like, he kind of is, to be honest. I don't think I can ever let go of the personal thing or somebody stop something or somebody, I, I, I can't. Yeah, that's the the business is the way it is because I've made it personal. Yeah, and, and you, you have to go home and you can't sleep about things. Most cause... people always say to me that it goes, yeah, you've got product, great product. The reason I keep on coming back to you is because of how you how you look after me and the service you provide and who you are as a yeah. person. They said if you weren't there, I would think about going somewhere else. Yeah, and it just shows the trust and relationship that we've built with these people over time. And when they've had a problem and they've come back and said, I've got a problem. And I said, don't worry, we'll sort it. And they've had their family had a problem and their optician won't see them. And they were like, fine, bring them in. And like, how much I'm not going to charge you. That's the kind of service. And I don't do it from a point of view like, well, I'm not going to charge you because I know you're going to come back. I do it from the point of view like, you needed me in like your time of need. And I don't want to take advantage of that like, I'll do it because you've been good to me over the years, over the glasses that you bought from me. So this is the least I can do for you. And his wife's like, I didn't expect that. But that's who we are. That's, we, 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 human, we have that sort of moral, ethical values first. And that underpins how we run business. Like, if it doesn't sit right, if it's ethically wrong or morally wrong, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I just won't do it. And that's where I think the business thrives. And compared to where we were, it's a five fivefold business mate from where we were when we started to what we do now it's not comparable it's just not comparable as a business Beautiful, mate, isn't it? because yeah. of what we did you know and, yeah. and i was everyone asked me this and i would say i would say to him that if it hadn't been for the branding element of the business i don't think i don't think i would have had that conviction i when you it's funny because when when i looked at you and you said to me oh that's a great idea like, he sort of, like, turned the switch in me, like, thinking, shit, man, like, I've just told someone <laughs> that doesn't know anything about the industry. And yeah. he's like, oh, shit, that's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And for me, that's like, okay, that's, I'm going to rock with it. And then, obviously, because a lot of people around you say, oh, it's not going to work. You, you do that. And sometimes too many opinions is a problem. Like, some people say, oh, it's not going to work. It's like, it's too expensive. Who's going to buy glasses like that? Like, you know, you can buy them online for £10. And I'm like... Listen, mate, this is like different. I kept on trying to convince him, but you can't convince the ones that doesn't can't be convinced or don't want to be convinced. So you still got to go with your gut a little bit. And sometimes you always say that when you want to make a decision, consult as least as, as least people as you can. Just rock with it. Guess what's going to happen? You guys are going to go well, two ways. Yeah. It's going to work or it's not going to work. If it doesn't work, you say, shit, didn't work. Try and do something else. But last thing you can do, and that's what a lot of people struggle with. So what happens when it comes to like a business, they come to you and say, Tim, I'm thinking about this, and you say, oh, amazing idea. Oh, unbelievable. And then they'll, they'll, they'll leave the room and think, oh, they feel like a million dollars, right? They think, oh, tomorrow, I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm going to rock with it. And the next door neighbour that's like, not done anything for 50 years, yeah. come and say, it's not going to work. Yeah. I'm like, and they, they completely feel demotivated. Why do you need that? Conv- why do you need your next door neighbour or your friend Someone to tell you that it's going to work. If you believe in it, just do it. And that's where the difference is, where people fall off at the first hurdle. They do the branding bit and then they don't make the business work. Why? Because there's a lot of sort of talk around in the ear saying, don't do this, do that. I had it. People said, oh, just go with these. That's, that's a safe option. Like go with these brands, but everyone's doing it. Like I don't want to do what everyone's doing. I want to do something that no one's doing. And that's where the conviction comes in. That's where you got to think to yourself, you know what? And I look back on it now and I think, I could have very easily... Oh, easily. Easily. D- just said, you know what? I'll just do something else. Like, I'll, I'll just do the safe bit. I remember in the meeting, mate, you were telling me that people were like, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. I'm just like, nah, man, you need to do it. Yeah. I like, sort your fucking... I loved it. it. it it's, it's unbelievable. And like I said, there's very, there's very few opticians that do it. Yeah. And you know what the craziest thing is? A lot of people aren't aware... Like a lot of people aren't aware that there are opticians that do glasses like we do, the brands that we do, and the quality. People think glasses are glasses. When you see glasses that they think are glasses and glasses that are really glasses, then you think, oh my God, that this is like chalk and cheese, this. But people need to see it. And it's like, it's like awareness, right, with the brand. Yeah. You can have the best products in the world and provide the best service, but no one sees you. It makes absolutely no sense. So you've got to make sure that your brand stands out in that marketplace, whether it's for quirkiness, whether it's for product, something's got to get you noticed. Yeah. 
and this is where it's fundamental that it has to start from the, the bottom up. You can't just jump into the deep end. You, and, you know, if you're taking over an existing business, you need to inject your personality into it and you've got to in, inject your vision into it. So a lot of people are buying an existing business and they, I look at the branding and I think, it's poor. Like, it's really poor. But that's just me, from a novice perspective, looking at that, knowing what I've done with the business. And I think that could do so much more. And it's, that's where you need to sort of invest in it. And it, it, branding is an investment. It's, it's another cost. But it's a cost that will pay dividends. But you just need that kind of focus and direction and creativity. And, and once you give your ideas, you think, oh, man, I, this is me. That brand me now. Like, I'm going to run with it because that represents me. But a lot of people don't do it. They, they, they buy a business and they think, I'm going to run with it. And then they wonder why, like, in five years' time, they think, why, why is my business not progressive? Like, why have I fallen behind? Because you were never on it in the first place. And that's, I think, is fundamental. And I think a lot of people, when I was like, oh, I'm going to rebrand it. No, just fine, you know, just keep it as it is. I'm like, nah, like, I'm just not, something in me is not sitting right. I just, I, I don't know where I want to go with it. I don't know whether the name's right first. I don't know whether, what shall I do? Like if I said so, what, if you give me a dull look that day, I reckon it, I wouldn't have gone down that route. I mean, that, that's how much that sort of look at men and what you said, the mom, go with it. That fundamentally is where I am today, I reckon. Because obviously it would be interesting if we could play back 2019 and you'd give me a dull look and see whether I even end up at this point. I reckon I don't. I reckon I feel like, I feel demotivated after leaving. But when I left here, I was like, man, I'm going to make this work. And it's worked and it's, it's growing. And, you know, work, mate. We're, in, we're in a recession, allegedly. It, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? I'm like killing it. Yeah. Look, we're, allegedly we're in a recession, right? Right. We've not felt it. Yeah. You know, we've not felt it because... The thing is that people that people that do well do well in recessions as well, yeah. and then with the people that want to spend the money on the glasses, and when they need glasses, and they wear them every single minute a day. You know, you need your glasses. It's just one of them things, and we we do we do well. We do, we do very very well. But it you know because we care, we we make a difference to people's lives, and people we treat people like people. And when they go out and they tell people about where they got the glasses from, what they buy, and what product they've got. And they said, oh, I've had a phone call from a mate rang me and X, Y, and Z and got some glasses, come in the seats. And they were like, and they'd ring, they, then they'll ring you the first one and said, my friend came in, he's really happy. Like, and that's, that's what I live for personally, as in my opinion. Like, I just want the, I'm just like that child that, you know, I just want my ego filled a little bit. Not in a bad way. Like, I just want someone to say, like, thank you. Like, thank you for what you did. And that for me is like even if I if you give me a, a, some money here to take home I'm like I'll take the thank you and the like thank you you know how would, because that bit honestly will follow a hundred percent no doubt but don't chase that if you chase the money you lose your, you lose the focus on the small bits you need to build that small bit first and like I said we're, we're sort of three four years in uh, to where we were and we're growing we're, we're growing rapidly and people say to me like you know another place. And I thought about it and I think to myself like, but the problem I have is, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. Like I feel so personal, this business. Yeah. Like people end up following me for what I do. So even if I open one in Manchester, yeah. that, that didn't affect the business in Liverpool because they're following me as the business. So that's where like I think to myself like, do I need to do another one somewhere else just to just to get that brand out there? Because the brand's strong now. Like if whenever I look at it, you look at sort of go on Google and check the reviews out. The way we do it, we do it, we do it properly. Um, but that's the kind of concept I'm dealing with. You know, like, do I do another one? Do I need another boutique store? Or do I do it like this and do the home visits? Because that that business is expanding massively as well. And that's sort of very niche because, you know, people uh, People don't carry that kind of stuff around with them. And, you know, the kind of stuff that we have, you know, the Cartiers and the Jacques Marie Marge, you know, expensive product. So when they come out, a boutique guy comes out and tries it on your house, you're like, oh my God, this is like next level. But this that trust, the trust that we build, that, that's fundamentally where we are. Um, we're different. We just want to be different. And we'll keep on progressing. The new next new brand, we're on it. I have so many people said to us, it's probably one of the favourite brands that we've done. Just from a juxtaposition from... 
Johnny Goggles and you think that should be sort of low end sort of what's it to this high end I'm just like I, I knew as soon as you said it exactly what I wanted to create for you yeah. this really high end thing with this like quirky sort of down to earth yeah. street Liverpool street yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, name yeah. I'm like oh my yeah, god yeah amazing because that was sort of like I did like I said when I came in I, I wasn't sure like I, I was dead unsure I thought you were going to say to me scrap it we're going to run with this name instead yeah but like you, mate, if we were going to do that, right, I, I would have had to charge you more for yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's not about that. No. It's about I knew that was right for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anybody else probably got, no, let's scrap the name, let's call it a different name yeah, and yeah. have to charge you yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, nah, Aussie, fuck, yeah. you know, mate. Yeah. It's, that name's a gold mine. Yeah, yeah. My, my issue was that because the reputation of that that name was slightly... I wouldn't say tarnished, but it wasn't Not the getting best. the service that you're giving now when yeah. people are like, oh, I'm not with Johnny Goggles. Cause That's what it was like. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. in my head, I'm thinking like, do I just need to change that? Or am I looking at the new customer that probably is looking at the brand from a, a completely different perspective, coming in thinking... Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what that brand, what's that about? Yeah. And then they're looking at it and think, oh, that, that's a cool name. And everyone that comes in say, oh, that's a cool name. It's a cool name. And we hear that every single day, five times a day. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a crazy name. And they never forget the name. Never. You know, you know it's one, and that's key for branding, right? So yeah. the name has to stick. Yeah. And that's where we, you know, we're very, very lucky that the decision that we made in terms of rocking with that brand, um, it's paid dividends, it's paid dividends. And we can focus now on the, so the day-to-day running of the business. Uh, it, it's so what do you think your, your next move is going to be? What, what, let's go back to 2019 and you have that gut feeling. Yeah. What's your gut feeling right now for, um, for you? So, so, so my gut feeling at the moment is, uh, look, I've got three young kids, right? Yeah. So I'm conflicted a little bit because if I want to be quite selfish and I think to myself, like, I want to make more money. Mm. Or I want to do more. I want to progress more up the ladder. The problem is something will have to give. My kids will have to give and my family time will have to give. I love that part of my life as much as I love my work life. The question then is, how much money do you really need? And I can't answer that and that answer is different for everybody. I just want to make sure that I'm there for my kids while they're growing up because I know I'm not going to get that time back. So my conflicted part at the moment is, do I do this again somewhere else? Open up another store, open another boutique, which takes a lot of my time. Emotionally, I'm more involved. I'm spending less time at home. My kids are growing up and I'm missing that part of the process. Or do I grow this? Do I grow this to catapult it to a level that I know where it can go? Because we're touching the surface. Like I reckon, under the few years, like, I could, I could see it like yeah. incrementally increasing so yeah. the problem I, I'm just in a conflict because but why is, why is that a problem then when you've just said what you're going to do I know because I, in my head I don't I'm, th- I'm thinking of all these things so I'm thinking shall I open another one cloud one second one is I'm just going to grow this thing yeah. cloud two which is the strongest conviction at the moment yeah. because with that I've got because my my kids growing up it's fundamental to me now because Perfect. it's, it's a what, case what, of like, I'm going to miss that time. You're guessing yourself for them. They do that. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's just in my head. You I'm like, you've got such a fucking great brand name. Yeah. You've got such a great brand within Liverpool. Yeah. You don't need to set up a second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For what? Yeah. You know, that's what maybe other people are doing. They yeah. go, oh, I want to open another one, another one, and I want to get... It's yeah. like, why? To just be, like... To be honest with you, like, you've you know, got I, I, I have this thing where I've got friends who've got opticians, right? Yeah. And they'll, they'll buy the optician. And then they'll buy another optician with a different name and they run with that name. And they've got five opticians with five names, right? Yeah. I find that very hard in myself because I can't like... I find it difficult to have a strategy for, for focus of brands and products because one is like in an area where it's sort of not very kind of just, just national health kind of low end there kind of area. Mm-hmm. One middle end. It's like, are you running it for the business just to try and accumulate funds? Yeah. Or do you genuinely have a passion for it? Like I struggle to buy a business or do a business for just sake of doing a business. Like I, I struggle with that. Someone said buy another one. I'm like, but like I, 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 I love what I've created. Yeah. And that's where for me, the growth in my side of the market is, is if you can't come to me and you struggle coming to me, it's me coming to you. And that's where people are like, 
and people don't have that service and people I think half the problem is people aren't aware that that service is available you'll see on like um, people like Spectre was offering this like we come to your house kind of concept right yeah but that's if you're like disabled and all you know you've got physical yeah. disabilities or you can't physically get out of the house but that's just that's like a needs must kind of thing in the sense of you can't see you need glasses yeah. you just want the basic stuff and you're sorted I'm talking about stuff that you want not what you need you want to go on holiday and you think you know what I want, I want, some, I want some nice stuff here come yeah. and see me and that's the part of the business that I, I want to grow but like the fundamental part is people being aware that this service is available yeah. it can happen and we work time wise around their time so if you said to me look I'm back from work at 7 do 7 till 8 you know what I mean like we can just do it on, on the back end of the day it's not a problem so that's where the, and the, the, the business itself in the store that's incrementally growing yeah. um, so that's my natural tendency is like okay that's where I want to go Summer. that's where I want to go you just grow your brand yeah, you're from that's that it. you don't yeah. need anything it's, bigger you don't need it. more yeah. To, yeah. to grow a brand yeah. you don't it's got such a great fucking name, mate. Yeah. You know, f- you know, for for what it does, people say about the service and the amount of not the amount of the vast, but the the quality of the product that you've yeah. got in there. That people yeah. are always always saying it. Yeah. Um, you just fucking just keep doing that. Mate. Yeah. Don't keep doing that, don't you? Yeah, we've got we've got we've got some. Like I said, product's good. And then what we did as well, because obviously it's I'm so a... beautiful, mate. That you're saying that about you. Your family, you know, your three kids and stuff, yeah. and balancing that with like your brand and like, it, yeah, it's like you know what it is. You know what the, you know the Johnny is? Johnny is a lifestyle yeah, brand. It is, isn't it? Right, and the, the the owner, the guy who owns it, right, he's doing it with heart and passion, and he doesn't want to open a second shop because he wants his family and stuff like that. Yeah. Are you on board with Johnny Goals? You fucking goddamn right, I'm on board yeah. with Johnny Goggles. Yeah, because that, that's that, what it's about. That's the beauty about isn't it. it. Yeah, it, it, it's a family. It's a family thing, and. I love what I love what I do, and kid, my kids love it. My kids love the brand, you know. Like my kids, oh, dad, Johnny, go. Where did that name come from? And all that. They come into the shop, say, and they're like at school, like my dad or Johnny Goggles, you know, like mate, come on, you know, it's it's they come in, yeah, man. and they like they rock up in the school with their glasses. I'm like, oh, your glasses are well cool. I, we know who your dad is, basically. Yeah, yeah. But it's just it, the whole thing about it, mate. It's it, it's just phenomenal. Like I love, I love the whole part. Let like, me, you know, as well, like. What is success, right? It's, 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 a, it's a million dollar kind of question. And people say like, people think that success lies in finance and people think that the more money you have, the more successful and the happier you are. Absolutely wrong. Ask, ask the guy who's rich and lonely. He regrets every decision he made. He's lost everything in the process. Family, everything. Why? Because he chased that so much that everything in between. And the thing is, as real and as, as, as downbeat this is going to sound, we're here for a little while. We just need to make sure their moments count and you create those memories for them kids because for me ultimately I'm doing what I'm doing so that my kids can do something better than what I did so that when they look at their dad and think you know my dad worked hard he did this and that maybe they're the next generation the, the new generation of thinkers like they'll think you know what, I'm gonna do this because my dad taught me this and their kids will be different so it's not it's what I'm doing here is it it's like a drop in the ocean of what I want to happen for them not into just a work ethic like he went from this to that he did this he did this and everything i try to do i let them experience it with me like if i was buying a car like when i bought my car i bought it for me yeah i bought it for the kids because i wanted them to see their faces when that car got unveiled they were like oh my god Dad, yeah, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is not from me, this is from God. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. God's blessed me. Like, I'm just yeah. I'm just like a vessel. And they looked at that. And I'll never able to forget that glint in their eye when they saw that. And they were like, oh my God, Dad, that's... Um, and that was the motivation that they need. That's the kick up the backside. So when they're at school and I'm like, kids, where are you going? They're at school. What did you go for? To, to, to learn about stuff. I said, it's not about being the best at everything. But whatever you're good at, be very good at it. Because you're never going to be good at everything, right? So they're like, and that's their motivation. Every time we go on a holiday, we're like, I will bring it back. I always say, guys, we're very blessed to be where we are. But remember how we got there? We need to work at this. And you need to work at it. I'll do my bit for you guys. You've got to put the, you've got to put the uh, nine yards in as well. You know, like the saying, you can take a, you can, you can take a horse to drink. You know, the same kind of thing. Like I'll provide you everything you need. 
You'll never need to worry about that side. Just make sure that when I get, I want to sit back in 20, 30 years time and think to myself like everything, everyone that I dealt with, whether it was from a business point of view, whether it was in my community, whether my children, I can sit back and say like, I, I didn't wrong anyone. Like I did everything to the best of my knowledge with the, with the utmost faith that I was trying to do the best for everyone. And my kids are successful in what they're doing. And, and for me, like if I had to go at that point, I'm good. Like, cause I've done, like, that's my bit, that's my like, bit contribution to the society. And that's why I think it's fundamental. I think people lose track that, you know, they, they're chasing that money and yeah, it's good. Don't get me wrong. When you get a bit of that sweetness, you want more of it, but don't let the other side of life go away because you'll miss it. And when you're not got it, you'll be like scratching your head thinking that bloody hell, I've got all this for who and for what? It's just not worth it. And I was, I have that dilemma now that like, sometimes I feel like I was putting too much time in and I think, oh, I'm spending enough time <coughs> with the kids. Like, you know, I went from working seven days a week to like, I'm working five days. I still feel guilty that I'm working five. So my wife's like, oh, we need, to, can you take another one off? It's like, it's like balance, you know, it's just that kind of balance. The thing is, when I don't work, I feel more tired. Like, I need to work. I need to be like on it mentally. Like, I need routine and structure in my day. Like, I know I've got to do X, Y, and Z. And when I see customers and all that, I, I like that process. And I say to my family, like, you know, I need to do this part of my day for you two guys to enjoy that part of the day. So I think it's fundamental. I thought people need to realise that, yes, it's all good business and you want to have the strategy, but don't lose focus of the balance in your life because once you lose that balance, it's a very hard pendulum to swing back. And that's the thing, you know, and be content. You know, you don't have to be like the next Richard Branson, just happy in your element. Like you could make whatever you make as long as you can do what you want to do and everyone around you is happy and you're content. It's, done. it's like the famous rap song, you know, um, Biggie, mm. more money, more problems. And it was not wrong because the thing is, it comes with more responsibility and you, 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 you're having more things to deal with and it does cause more problems. So it's when to say, I'm happy here. And that's not you giving up saying, I don't want to progress. That's you recognising that there's another part to your life. You have a bigger purpose in life that yes, business is my purpose, but actually my family is just as important as my business. So you just need to find that balance in. Sometimes the pendulum does this and you just recognise it. Sugar, I'm a bit here now. I just need to swing that back down again. So that's the key in it. That's the, that's the key. That's, that's what the key. I think is key with business. Yeah, that is the key. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. You know, sometimes emotionally you get a bit involved in, yeah. you know, you, you try not to bring stuff home, but you bring it home uh, and you take it out, you know, you, you people around you yeah, yeah. In, in a way that you don't. I, I, I'm just, a, I just go quiet. Like when I've got something to think about, like I'm not a lashing out kind of guy. I'm just a bit like, I need to think on this like I need to sort this out and this sort that out and I come home with like everyone's like oh dad why are you so down today I'm like I'm fine I'm just, I'm just sorting it out and then once I'm done with it I'm good I can let it go but I just need to process it in my own yeah, head yeah, yeah. so it, it's good man I think uh, I think people need to realise that the business side of it um, very important but don't lose the, the don't lose the family side it's, it's just as important if not more important sometimes okay. and that one will fill the other you know if you see your kids doing well you think you know what and that motivation thing I'm doing this for my kids and I think your, your business drives that bit quicker as well um, so it, it works it works both ways but the branding man is key it's key without it without without it it's like it's like I don't want to say it in, in a nasty kind of way it's like it's like pissing in the wind a little bit you know just no real direction you're like you, you're going this way and that way and you're trying to launch an arrow and it's like you don't quite know where the target is just aiming and just hoping that it hits but you need that, you, you need to know where you are, where you want to be, and sort of how you're going to get there. It's not going to be complete. But you, you'll have milestones like yeah. point one, point two, point, just achieve your milestone, everything in between, it's all fine print, you'll, you'll get that bit. But that's it, but I think it starts from here. I think it definitely does. And I, I look back and if, if someone says to me now, I'm going to start a business, I would say brand it. You need to get your branding right. And everyone's like, oh, are you sure? I'm like, listen, and people, you know, is that people get confused between branding and a logo, don't get confused. It's not it's the same thing. A logo absolutely means nothing. A branding is like, the vision is, it's it's so deep, the, the branding element of it, uh, of where you want to be and, how, and it's your passion. Your passion creates that brand, believe it or not. And then you see that passion, you think, okay, I know what I'm going to do with this. And that's because that's your field. You look at it and it's like, oh shit, this is unbelievable. And that's where I think, where you guys are like, I think you guys are like architects in a way, right? So I say to myself, 
like it's like me saying to you, I want to build a house, Tim. He goes, what do you want? I said, look, I'm a little balcony at the back. I want loads of glass. Don't know where I want the glass. I want loads of glass. I want to feel open plan. And the, the guy goes, okay, I've taken a bit of a brief here. I know, what, I know what you're doing. And then he shows you this 3D visual on the screen like he did the other day. And you think, oh, shit. Like, you, all your ideas have just literally been evolved into this mad house. And you never knew that that house exists in your head. And when you can do that as a, as a branding agency to blow people's mind to think, oh, shit, this is like next level. You've done your job. And that's what I felt like when you did it with me, it was like, okay, you've done your job. Like it was whatever it was, it cost, it, it paid for itself. And it's like that when you, when you, when you built the house, it's like, oh man, like I could never have built this. Like I could never have dreamt of this house. I've never designed, why? Because that's what you do. That's what you have to trust in people like you to, to sort of navigate you a little bit and just put you on the road. All you're doing is asking for a bit of guidance, saying, and you've, you've heard these stories many times. You work with companies that do different things, but guess what? Ultimately, a few fundamentals never change. The passion. Yeah. That passion will lead you to develop a brand and the product, whether you're selling shampoo, you're selling glasses, it doesn't matter because ultimately the process of branding and the way you want to take it, it's the same process, but it has to start from the person that's developing the brand because if you don't do it and if you don't get enough input from me, you don't know what you want to create. And when, when you look at me, you can see, okay, I, I know exactly what I want to do with this guy. And you come back and it's like, oh, sugar man, that, that's exactly what I needed. <laughs> and you see the vision, you look at the process, but it, it's fundamental, mate. And, and I Appreciate think- Appreciate it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I mean, and I don't, I'm not just doing lip I service just, here. I think I, it's just that people don't understand it, do they? You know what I mean? People, that, that's the fundamental thing. And I, I, I always ask myself like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, you're doing opticians or we're doing a dentist. I'm like, brand it. Like, you want to be out there. You want to notice it. There's some people who got to notice you. And I think when I, when I deal with you, when I dealt with you in 2019, I didn't feel like I was coming to a branding agency. I felt like I was coming to speak to a mate. And it felt like, like I could say anything that I want. And even if I couldn't quite get it out, you were like, this is what you mean, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Like, I just, that's exactly what I mean. But I just couldn't say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's for me, was like, I could relate to you very, very easily. Yeah. And that's when I felt confident that, you know what? These guys are going to do something great. Because sometimes too formal is not, is not the right way. It's like a classic example, like our industry tells us that you've got to be in a suit and boot, you know, when you're going to work. Yeah. First, first thing I did when I got into work, I got rid of the suit and boot. I go in a t-shirt with collars in, with trainers on. Why? Because that's who I am. Yeah. That I feel comfortable. If I feel comfortable, my customers are going to be comfortable around me. And I don't do all that formal kind of stuff. You'll get smart kind of t-shirt, collars, some, you know, some trousers, some chinos and some trainers. I'm going to work and everyone's like, yeah, man, because they feel relaxed when I'm there. And the people that deal with it, and that's what I'm trying to say to you. You need that. You need that kind of focus. You need that focus. And with you, you're very relatable. Appreciate you know, it, mate. definitely, mate. And that's where I think, that's why it, it, it works. And it worked for me. When I first saw you, I was like, ah, oh, man, this is, the, this is it. Like, I felt it straight away. Like, this is where I'm going to go. And this is where we are, mate, to Fucking 2024, man. mate. It's crazy. No, honestly, I'm just buzzing. It's just not like you, just knowing that, you've, you know, fivefold, you've grown your business. But just that, you know, what you've written on there to kind of go, fucking hell, as we've done exactly what you set what out you set in your head for. and fucking that name's out there you're getting some of the fucking uniquest brands on yeah. board with your brand I'm like yeah. fuck it we've done everything we said yeah everything everything yeah and I always look back to that document that we did yeah just like you know when I'm like away oh, just that just to keep me on that track and yeah, think, yeah. But where, where, where did we want to go what's our roadmap and we were like to be the best and the coolest opticians in Liverpool done that that's easy. Now we're like me, so I've done that. That's easy. Where are we gonna go? Like I, I don't I don't mean to brag, but you find me an optician in a hundred and fifty mile radius that does what we do and the brands that we've got, you won't find it. You won't find it. Why? Because we built this and when people are trying to get on the bandwagon, guess what? It's gone. That boat's gone. You had to commit when when you didn't see the trend. 
we committed when it was so early in the market and people brands are like yeah we've done we're not opening again. there's one that Jack Marie Mars brand not opening any accounts ever ever no just can't service the product got too many stockists around the world so imagine you've got 500 pieces and you've got 520 accounts 550 accounts what's the point of another one you can't, no one can get the no one can get the product and you know what that brand is like people ring you from America and say have you got this framing because everywhere in America sold out Europe sold out and they know all the stockists everywhere in the world and these guys are like hardcore right they know everything about it I need this frame this colour this this, this this I've got it in okay how much is it the next round can you, I'll, I'll send I'll wire the money across the post it to me it's straight like there's no bargaining or ha- you know haggling with that literally they know what they want and they're all experts at it and they were like if you get this model in ring me I'll pay you and they're collecting them like you won't believe and I'll tell you what though I see on some of these brands they become so sought after that the value of what you pay and what they're worth completely different yeah. it'll be like a Rolex yeah. you buy a frame for a 500 quid 600 quid it's worth 10-15 grand because someone's going to wear that and everyone's going to want it there was a movie that came out recently and there was a frame that was on there and people ringing left, right and centre. I want this frame, I want this frame, I want this frame. People that had it made a packet and they were willing to pay whatever. You know, like a frame was, I think, originally retail about 600 quid. I see people selling it for 10 grand and they were buying, buying it for 10 grand. Because you can't get any more. That colour's gone. They won't make any more. So it's a, it's a great concept. It's, it's one of them where it's a bit cruel because you're sort of for us if you want said to me next time you came in I want the same frame yeah. can't do it yeah. like you just can't do it like it's just not possible so you've got to either go for a different colour like it might have a variance of that colour but never the same colour so that's that's where that's where we're niche be. that's where we're different to like most other people just tell everybody where you're based we're in uh, Liverpool City Centre um we're near the Liverpool One Centre, next to the jewellers called uh, Boodles. Boodles. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the reason. So we're next to like the biggest, one of the most prestigious jewellers in, in like, not only Liverpool, but like in London. Yeah. So like, it made sense that we were like a boutique optician next to a Boodles. And the amount of business we get from there as well, because people are going there to look at watches and jewellery. Like, oh, I've never seen you were here. And they're coming like, oh, you do some amazing stuff. Uh, and a couple of times, you know, we've had customers gone there and like well I've seen a pair of glasses in that window and then one of the guys have come in and said can you do a deal for this guy who's buying a X, Y and Z from us and we're like yeah it was fine and he comes in he's bought a watch or a, a diamond ring in there and he's come in and bought glasses from us so it sort of works in synergy so Liverpool City Centre um, outside Liverpool 1 um, yeah find us on Google you can find us on um Social media, yeah, just type in Johnny Goggles, Johnny know. Goggles, yep, yeah. and exactly you'll right. find us. And yeah, you know, you've tried the best, you tried everyone else, try the best now, you know, you tried the rest, try the best. I appreciate Ozzy, thank you very Here's much. Is to the next five years, mate, yeah, uh, man, we'll do I'm it. Excited again. to see what's yeah, man, man. Do, we'll do, corner, it again, man. We'll do it again. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for listening, everybody. Goodbye.